Uh, so in this presentation, it's going to be a mixture of languages. Uh, the presentation is mostly going to be in Spanish. I'm going to speak in English. And uh, there's some parts of it that are in Portuguese. So uh, <laughs> I hope that with this, uh, we will be able to understand. Or if you want me to drop English and just speak Spanish or uh, Portuñol, uh, you tell me. It's okay? Okay, so... It's up to you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So um, I'm going to first uh, present ITESO, then I'm going to talk about a little bit about Mexico in general and Guadalajara in particular, and then we can uh, talk about some specific things that are questions that exchange students typically have when they're coming to ITESO. So uh, I'm, as I said, I'm going to begin introducing ITESO. As you can see in our full name, uh, we are the Jesuit University in, in Guadalajara. So that makes uh, Puki, Hill and uh, ITESO sister universities. They're both, um, they're both Jesuit universities, so uh, we're sister universities. Uh, ITESO was founded in 1957, uh, and it's part of the, what we, the way that we say it in, in, in Spanish is AUSJAL, maybe in Portuguese AUSJAL, AUSJAU, I don't know, but it's part of the Latin and American universities, in, Jesuit universities, uh, so uh, ITESO is part of that, and uh, we are part of the Ministry of Education in Mexico. And uh, not only do I say it, but it's ranked as one of the best uh, universities in, in Western Mexico overall. And a private, one of the top 10 private universities in Mexico, definitely uh, one of the best outside Mexico City. And uh, one of the things that ITESO uh, it's very known for or renowned, it's because of its uh, care of the environment in such a way that in the green metric rankings, uh, Mexico, it's uh, the third in our country, most sustainable. And it's actually uh, very highly ranked in North America, including all the United States universities. Uh, so, as I said, or, or, or we were saying, Brazil and, and Mexico have a lot of things in common, but also our universities have a, a lot in common. And uh, sometimes when students are trying to go to Europe or to the United States or Asia, they face that the degrees there don't have a lot in common. Uh, so they can take some classes, but uh, is a lot of things are very different. So one of the similarities that I have found between Pukihiu and ITESO is that the degrees that we have uh, have a lot of coincidences. So it is very likely that you'll find your degree uh, at ITESO. So these are humanities. We have a lot of uh, uh, degrees available for humanities and including fashion that's that that one's new and i don't think that you will a lot of fashion students want to go to europe but they don't find that as a degree well we have it and then uh, there are the business degrees including a uh, uh, hospitality and tourism which is in my opinion very important for uh, that region of brazil and uh, as you know well mexico it's one of the countries top 10 in receiving foreign uh, tourism in, in Mexico and Guadalajara is one of the most important cities for that. And Guadalajara is located in the state of Jalisco. So also the state of Jalisco is one of the major receiver of foreign tourists. Actually, uh, here we have a, a very a large number of foreign people living here, including people from the United States and Canada, uh, et cetera, no, uh, from, but there's a big neighborhood or colonia, as we call it, and with thousands of uh, foreign or international uh, expatriates living here in, in the state of Jalisco. 
And well, in this, besides hospitality and tourism, we have this new degree that is a business and dig digital marketing or digital markets. So that's, a, I think, one of the new degrees that could be appealing for your students or for Pukihio students. And finally, we have the engineering degrees. In this also, uh, I find that there's a lot of coincidences between um, Pukihio and Iteso. So if you wanna know more about uh, all the degrees, um, normally every year, I, I was trying to use the chat, but then I can, I can uh, write it later, the, the web, page to see the degrees and to see the content for each one is carreras.iteso.mx so i'll write it down later and when you come to iteso as an exchange student you will be able to use all of our uh, facilities including a, a, a gym that's state of the art and you will have access to our coaches to sports medicine. We have a, a lot of teen sports that are very popular with our students. And uh, actually when ITESO plays against other Jesuit universities or against other Mexico Mexican universities, they do very well. So you have a volleyball, beach volleyball, which I think it's very popular in, in, in Rio. And then you have soccer, baseball, tennis, there are tennis courts, track and, field um, uh, track and field you can play track and field and you can play rugby and then uh, our gym is is super large so you can do all sorts of things that you can do there like kickboxing spinning pilates zumba etc uh, you can find more information about this in in sports and health iteso a facebook page which is deporte y salud iteso and as an exchange student, you can uh, join these teams. And uh, also, this part of ITESO is in charge of doing some um, like field trips. So you can go to many places nearby, to the beach, to the mountain, to the lake, to the forest. All of those are within a few hours of Guadalajara and are organized by ITESO. And also, uh, it's a very important part of ITESO that we are a Jes Jesuit university. So here uh, in the Ignatian university, uh, university Center or Centro Universitario Ignaciano, you will be able to join and participate in these activities such as working with migrants. Uh, Guadalajara is in the way for uh, migrants to the United States. So we have uh, Mexican migrants, but also from Central America, from countries like uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, also currently from Cuba, Venezuela, Haiti, uh, et cetera. So uh, you can work with these uh, programs. Uh, also, uh, you can, there are not a lot of indigenous population in this state, but obviously Mexico has millions of indigenous uh, people. So uh, actually there's a visit to Chiapas, which is one of the most heavily indigenous populated states. And then there are other related to education, uh, psychology, environmental uh, problems, uh, Etc. And also uh, spirituality workshops for students. So all of that is part of the Ignatian uh, Center. And well, that's just like a big picture of what ITESO is. And well, obviously, a very important part of coming to ITESO is coming to Mexico and uh, coming to Guadalajara, which is, a, in my way of seeing it, a very Mexican city. So why am I saying that Guadalajara is a, a very Mexican city? Because some of the things that you think of Mexico uh, are actually from Guadalajara, like uh, mariachi and the typical dress and tequila. Tequila is from, from here, like one hour away. When you come to Guadalajara, 
you're going to go to this little town called uh, Tequila. I'll talk about that later. But well, uh, Guadalajara, uh, the city where ITESO is, is Mexico's second largest city. It's about 5 million population. So it's smaller than uh, Rio, but it's a very big city. It's formed by uh, many municipalities. In Spanish, we call them municipios. Uh, the most important are the ones that are in the presentation, Guadalajara, Zapopan, Tlaquepaque, and Tonalá, but there are others. Actually, uh, ITESO is located in Tlaquepaque. And well, Mexico, it's one of the most uh, important cities. I'm sorry, Guadalajara is one of the most important cities in Mexico for culture uh, and actually in Latin America. Uh, we have one of the largest international uh, film festivals that it's in uh, every year in March. It has been changing uh, lately because of the pandemic, but normally it was always held in, in March. It's, it's the most important film festival in all of Latin America. And then also you have uh, the most important book fair. It's the most important for all the Spanish uh, speaking countries. and actually the second largest in all of the world. That normally happens in November. And even, even with the pandemic, it's still being held in, in, in November. So that's kind of uh, for sure. And well, as I was saying, uh, some of the things that are nearby Guadalajara, it's towns like Tequila. There in the presentation, you can see the, the plant where tequila comes from, which is called agave. And also in that picture, you can see Huachimontones, which are some round pyramids, the only round pyramids in Mexico. And in also Mexico has a, a government program for magical towns, uh, towns that are considered very beautiful, very quaint, small, that they um, still have this small town charm and that is well uh, taken care of. So Jalisco has some of these towns that are very near Guadalajara, such as Tapalpa, San Sebastián del Oeste, Lagos de Moreno, Mazamitla, etc. And actually, one of the, no, it's, it's not one of the, it's the largest lake in Mexico. It's located just half hour away from Guadalajara or 50 kilometers, which is called Chapala. It's another place that you can go. And within the metropolitan area of Guadalajara, you have these uh, artisanal centers or for handcrafts, which are world famous, Tlaquepaque and Tonalá. And well, coming to Mexico, it has a lot to do with food. So there's a lot of food that uh, when you think of Mexico, you think of that like tacos, quesadillas, chilaquiles, enchiladas, etc. All of that we have in Guadalajara, but we also have uh, some food that is especially from this region. Uh, it's the one that you can see in the, in the presentation. The one that is called torta ahogada, which is a salty bread or uh -huh, um, you, this is like the typical food from here from Guadalajara. Uh, and well, you will experience it here. We have desserts, we have beverages. The one that is called cazuelas that is in the presentation, it's made from tequila and a grapefruit, lemon, etc. So I love this, it's very delicious. I'm getting a little hungry. Um, I think that in Rio it's past lunchtime, but uh, here it's, we're getting close to that. <laughs> and, um, well, this is uh, basically it for my presentation. I wanted to keep it uh, brief, uh, especially if you had any, any questions. And uh, if you want to contact me, I will be happy to, uh, to reach uh, for you. And uh, that's my email. It's a little complicated because my last name is spelled with a Z, but it's uh, Ricardo, then G A R Z. IAC at iteso.mx. And I wanted to finish with saying something that 
it's an advantage for you to come uh, to Guadalajara is that uh, Mexico is one of the cheapest countries in the world. Besides being one of the most cultural important countries in the world and being beautiful and being so similar to Brazil, it's also being practical to consider that it's cheaper than Brazil. So Brazil is also cheap for Europeans or people in the United States, Canada, Japan, etc. But Brazil is more expensive than Mexico. Therefore, your uh, eyes, your uh, your money is going to be um, worth in, more in Mexico because we're we're cheap. So this is a, an advantage. Uh, sometimes students want to go on exchange but don't have the means to do it. Well, um, in in that way, you can see there Guadalajara an option. Uh, Mexico as a country is cheaper than Brazil. Guadalajara as a city is cheaper than Rio, and we're cheaper than uh, Mexico City. So uh, that's uh, another reason to consider uh, Guadalajara as an option, even if it's just for practical reasons. So um, that's it for my presentation, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Oh, Ricardo, muito obrigado. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I, I have a question. If a student uh, doesn't have any knowledge in, in Spanish with zero Spanish, I, I mm -hmm. know that Portuguese <laughs> and Spanish is very similar, but sometimes students uh, have some problem to learn uh, Spanish before they, they go abroad. Uh, if, do you offer some classes in English? Yes, we have yes. many classes in, in, in English. They are in all the departments. So in the business department, in the engineering oh. department, uh, there are also classes in English that are uh, in the human formation department. So they're mm -hmm. very general that students for any from any degree can take them. Uh, uh, classes like cinema, human rights, environment, and interculturality that are uh, very broad but also very interesting are offered in English every semester so students can take them. Of course we have a Spanish for foreigners program and uh, and I think that with an intensive course mm -hmm. uh, before coming students can pick up enough Spanish to come prepare and then while here, uh, pick at it even more. But yeah, uh, we have uh, a large uh, amount of classes offered in English every semester. This semester, we have like 40 classes uh, that are in English and uh, there were more offered, but they didn't open because they didn't have enough students because they're presential. So this semester, online classes were more popular. Yeah. But um, yeah, especially for the business degrees, we have a lot of classes because we have a lot of foreign students that don't speak uh, Spanish and don't speak Portuguese. So, <laughs> yes. uh, so they speak French or we have a lot of students from Germany, from Austria, from Netherlands, from the United States. So for them, it's more difficult to pick up Spanish quick. So these students typically come from business schools. So we have more classes in, in those areas. Yeah, it's the same here. Um, so uh, do, do uh, the requirement, it's TOEFL, uh, IELTS, so what's the, the requirement for uh, English language? Yes, they just have to prove B2. Uh, B2. Uh, B2, okay. a B2 level, and it can be TOEFL, it can be IELTS. Uh, yes. It doesn't matter if it's TOEFL ITP or IVT, and but but yeah, if with that they can take classes in English. Yeah, we have uh, our own um, certificate test, cert uh, certificate of language provided by our language department, and most of our partners accept this this uh, certificate of the we call CPS card. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe that, I believe it is you you accept as well. Yes, we accept it uh, as long as it's uh, 
by your language department, we yeah. can accept it. Oh, uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, if your language department says the student has a B2 level in Spanish, we also accept yes, it. Yes, that's right. Yes, thank you so much. And then they will come here speaking like Argentinians or Spaniards. <laughs> it, it's so funny for me to hear Brazilians speaking Spanish <laughs> with a Brazilian accent and with a Argentinian vocabulary and, and pronunciation. Yeah. Well, they start classes in, in, in Mexico, in Puebla, uh, I started level one. And uh -huh. uh, after two, four, four, uh, three, two hours speaking in class, the professor, you know, you need to go to level three. <laughs> <laughs> you because you have a, very... a lot of comprehension. You mix to Portuguese and Spanish. So we are going to move you for a high very level. Fast just yes. to to have a challenge or yeah, a desafio <laughs> so yes. i started level three with completely shy <laughs> but it uh, was, was amazing it was very good yeah now i need yeah. to to improve better my spanish because i love i i try to watch movie to help me but yes but i, I don't have more questions ricardo do you have questions yeah do you have some question? Yeah. Hi, Ricardo. Do you think that is easy to move around in Guadalajara? Do you have a, a good transportation system uh, that can take your students from uh, accommodation to campus and, and take them to downtown and things like this? Mm -hmm. Well, ITESO is located a little bit far away from uh, parts of the city. So mm -hmm. sometimes that is a challenge, but uh, students are for uh, our exchange students typically do two things they live in the neighborhood that is right behind iteso okay. so they come to iteso walking or by bicycle mm. and the other is that they live in very popular neighborhoods in guadalajara what would be like copacabana mm. Leblon, etc., ipanema yeah. instead of living in in baja de tijuca okay. so so they live in very touristic um neighborhoods and they come together to Iteso. So, oh, nice. so yeah, uh, Guadalajara has the challenges of a big city. We do have a metro system. We have uh, some other uh, mass public transportation system that it's been improving a lot in the recent years, mm -hmm. but it still has uh, its challenges. Yeah, all right. as all big cities. Yeah, <laughs> in Latin American big cities, but, yes, true. Latin American. but we're working and on that. Other, other, other big cities as well. Sometimes yes. it's impossible to have public transportation. Yes, yes the bicycle system, it's, yeah. it has been enlarging a lot mm. in, the, in the last, the governor has placed a lot of interest in this. And we have now some of the uh, largest uh, uh, bicycle lanes in Mexico. So uh, it's improving. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I'd like to ask you, uh, do you have a buddy system like uh, students are the student helping other students, international students to social life or uh, to campus to city to? Yes, um, I forgot to mention it, but I'm actually in charge of the buddy program. Mm. So, oh, wonderful. So, <laughs> yes. So if students that would like to be part of the body program, I send an email to all of the uh, incoming students. And uh, if they accept, then they're assigned uh, uh, a body. And yeah, this starting from the body, the ITESO body, picking up the exchange student at the airport, showing the city, showing the university, uh, introducing their friends, introducing to Mexican traditions, Guadalajara traditions, Iteso traditions. Yes. So yeah, and we have okay. a um, we have a, a a nice team of Iteso bodies, and uh, a lot of our exchange students uh, participate in that. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, you have a lot of similarity. Yes, uh, very very good. Ricardo, I don't, I don't have a more question. Your, your presentation is complete and uh, very, very attractive. And I hope that uh, our Pukihiu students discover Iteso, Guadalajara, and go to Mexico because it's a, a wonderful country. I love too much. 
So I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm a good person to talk about Mexico because I enjoy <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So if I hope if it's Brazilian student you like to talk with us or talk with me, are you, are you glad to talk more about Mexico from my side, from my, mm -hmm. as a student that I were. <laughs> <laughs> Sean okay. bienvenidos a México, estaríamos felices de recibirlos. Muchas gracias. Você también, sea bienvenido a PUC Rio, sí. nuevamente al Rio de Janeiro, porque pelo visto você conoce. Falou da barra, ¿no, Ricardo? <risa> das praias, entonces você conoce. Entonces, sea bienvenido de vuelta. I, I would love to go back, yes. Yes, welcome back. <risa> eh, I have never been to Europe, but I have been in a lot of places in the Americas. Uh, from Canada to all the way to southern Brazil. Mm -hmm. And the most beautiful city that I've ever been is Puc Rio. I mean, it's Puc Rio. It's Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Rio de Janeiro. Puc is Rio de amazing Janeiro. as well. <laughs> Rio de Janeiro is the most beautiful city I've ever been to. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ricardo, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your time and, uh, and to add your more information for our students. Please. If you have doubts regarding your student coming to PUC, just send a message to me, yes, and you are glad to, to answer everything. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation.